I wanted to start with uh, a quick anecdote. Yesterday, yesterday I went into the gym and I was alone and then five people came in after me, one after another. And in, in New York now, Clay, we got signs up everywhere. You got to mask up in gyms again. And this is my this is the thing that made me hate Fauci almost more than anything else because you have people who are on the treadmill. I'm not a treadmill guy, but uh, obviously, but people who are on the treadmill are, you know, choking and coughing and all, you know, it's so stupid. One after another, they come in behind me and they see me no mask. They take their masks off. And finally, I think people are realizing this is just it's too stupid. Oh, a couple of weeks ago, it was safe. Now it's not safe. And we had this, and you sent this out to our team last night. The the CEOs of Southwest Air and American Airlines, because remember, planes are the place. They never budged on masking on planes. And here they are saying that masks on planes don't really do anything. That's what they're telling us. Clip number five, sir. So we'll play it in case uh, is very strong that masks don't add much, if anything, in the uh, air cabin environment. It's very safe and very high quality compared to uh, uh, any other indoor setting. Mr. Parker. I concur. The, air, the aircraft is the safest place you can be. That's true of all of our aircraft. They all have these HEPA filters in the same airflow. So what's funny about this, Buck, is that was, by the way, Senate testimony. So they're under oath there. The American and Southwest CEOs are both uh, retiring. Um, they are going to be replaced. And I think that's probably why they felt comfortable actually saying that. But I love that the other CEO immediately said, I concur, uh, because it's all a sham. I mean, I love, and, and by the way, this is not getting anywhere near as much attention as I think it should be getting, because anyone out there who has to travel, and I'm flying tomorrow, I, get, I, I that is the place where you talked about being in the gym and being in, in furious about the fact that you have to wear a mask. Thankfully, I've never had to do that. Uh, where I live, Um, but the idea that I have to put a mask on to get on an airplane and the fact that I have to put a mask on to walk through an airport terminal infuriates me. And I understand there's people out there saying, what's the big deal? It doesn't really matter that much. It does matter. If you tell me to do something that is totally not helpful and that is actually making me comply with a stupid rule for no reason, I'm going to be furious about it. And I love, finally, after 18 months, the fact that we've got uh, the CEOs of Southwest and American Airlines coming out and pointing out what is indisputably true, which is masking makes no sense. And all the petty tyrant flight attendants who are constantly walking up and down the aisle telling you that you took your mask down too long to take a sip of water or eat some uh, some some pretzels is uh, that they're all completely a sham it's all cosmetic theater there's no basis in reality for it whatsoever the airlines have been the place of greatest mask tyranny we all know yes this is the place where they're the most absurd the most i was on that uh, spirit airlines flight remember i've live tweeted this when they escorted people off the plane that was for and we all had to wait 45 minutes then they had to bring the paperwork people that was because they had it beneath their nose a few times. Okay, that yeah. was what the the full offense was. It was below the nose. They've I've been on planes where they've woken people up from slumber to say your mask has dipped below your nose, sir. These people are sociopaths. And I'm sorry, I've talked to people working at airlines. They don't have to do this, but I guess there are a lot of libs working for the airlines these days, or they're so terrified of the libs around them as passengers. But this is just one example, yet again, of what we've said all along here. The notion that you're at so much risk on an airplane. So you get on a plane, you got to mask up, but then you go into a restaurant in how many different places in America, and you sit there for a few hours with people without masks on eating. I, right now, I got, I got my coffee uh, this morning because I couldn't make it myself. I usually do. Uh, I was in a rush, so I got it at, at uh, you know Starbucks. I know, I know. Boo me later. I'm at Starbucks. I get my coffee. And there are people that are in line with masks on. Everyone sitting down is unmasked. Someone explain this to me, Clay. They act like this is going to stop Omicron? You've got to be kidding me. What about just on the airplane itself? You can eat a snack and drink with your mask off. But as soon as you're done, you have to put it back up. You're taking your mask off to eat and drink. And the one that I that, that, that really... 
I, I my wife gets frustrated because I point it out every time, but I feel like I have to tell somebody. Obviously, I can tell everybody on the radio, but when I'm walking through the airport terminal, I live in Nashville, right? When you walk through the Nashville airport terminal, there are a couple of different bar restaurants inside of Nashville that they built so that you sit at a bar and look out into the terminal. In other words, instead of facing towards the wall or facing inwards on the restaurant, there is a line of bars where you can sit and look as everybody walks past you while you sit there and have dinner, while you have a beer, whatever you're doing, while they're, by the way, have a live stage with live music going on as well. You can literally, from those seats, Buck, reach out and touch anybody who is walking by. You are breathing directly into the middle part of the terminal. You have to have a mask on in the terminal as you walk past these people. The people sitting at the bar, eating and drinking, literally who could reach out and touch you, do not have to wear masks. This is a childlike absurdity. And really what it reminds me of, Buck, is the kind of rules that authoritarian regimes put in place for anyone who's ever studied history. They have all of these illogical rules, which are often based on a leader who is not a rational person, and everybody is trying to jump through the hoops to make sure that they are complying with whatever absurdity is the daily rule of the regime. 